it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today we're going to be talking about the DC to DC charger, using that on your RV. Why would you want it? What does it do? What are the advantages? What would be the goals of having it on the RV? And is it necessary? That's what we want to try and answer today. I've always encouraged people to, to set a strategy where you can have something that fits your budget, fits what you want to do so that you can go and use your RV off grid. So whether that's solar or a generator, and today we're going to be looking at how a DC to DC charge controller fits into that schematic and possibly into that strategy. Now you can think of the DC to DC charge controller as a, a smart battery charger that uses your 12 volt source, in our case, our alternator to charge the batteries with multiple stages. So this will help your batteries charge more effectively because it has bulk absorption and float depending on the type of battery you have. You can use lead acid, AGM, gel. You can even set it up for lithium and it has the charging stages for that. So this gets used to charge our batteries as we're driving down the road. We have solar coming in, charging the batteries, and this is charging the batteries in parallel. That means we are charging the RV house batteries from the solar, from the solar charge controller, and the alternator through this at the same time. Now, truthfully, most RVs are already set up to do this. And even uh, fifth wheels and the towable travel trailers, if you're connecting those with a seven way adapter when you're connecting in the lights, that has power that's meant to charge the batteries inside of the RV as you go down the road. But when I started looking closer at what we were getting from the truck to the RV, it was almost undetectable. It was somewhere around to under one amp, which is hardly anything at all. So my goals were pretty simple. Number one, I wanted to charge the batteries effectively. Number two, I wanted to know on what I could count on. How much could I count on charging those batteries as we drove? And number three, I wanted to protect the alternator because you can overload the alternator and cause a problem there, cause failure at your alternator. And that is not something that you want to do. Now, just because we're going to be taking advantage of charging the RV in this way, doesn't mean that this whole process is actually free. Number one, you're going to be buying a device to help you take control of this. So you have the, the cost of that. You also want to consider the cost of the alternator. We didn't swap ours out. So we actually chose one that was within the, the parameters of what we could draw from it. That's why we only did uh, a 20 amp DC to DC charge controller. They have 20, 40 and 60 and you can continue going higher. Uh, but we didn't want to add an additional alternator. We didn't want to get a bigger alternator. We didn't want to have to spend more money into an alternator. Getting the 20 amps out of it was going to be sufficient for what we were hoping to get out of this system. Now, the other cost that is sometimes misunderstood is trying to get the power from the alternator. When you demand more power out of the alternator, it's going to cause more resistance. There's going to be resistance in that alternator to produce that power. And that's going to cost you in horsepower from the engine and fuel consumption. So if we take a look at this graph, this is a graph of an alternator. You can see the horsepower on this side goes up and you can also see the amperage goes up on the other side. So the more horsepower you're consuming, the more fuel you'll consume. This isn't just a, I have an alternator going, I'm gonna tap into as much power as I can. It does come at a cost but this is still a great way to charge up the batteries. It's a great strategy to add to keeping your batteries charged properly. Now, with that said, let's take a look at the install and a look at this unit. It's really a pretty simple unit. So looking at it, we have the input on this side and then the other side it has the output. It's gonna be going to the RV batteries. That's where we have the, the dip switches to be able to set it up for what type of battery you have, what kind of voltage you would like to have come out of it and what kind of charge cycles you would like to have. That's all set up by the dip switches. But then we have those two little ports there where uh, one of them is gonna help it act as an isolator. So you can isolate a starter battery from your RV batteries. We wired it up so that we have it connected to our light. So we turn on the lights for the truck, it turns on that device and it allows it to start charging the batteries. If we wanna turn it off, we can just turn off the lights to the truck or we can disconnect it or we can even flip the breaker in here. So we have multiple ways to turn it off if we want to. The other adjustment that we have on there is we can actually cut the charging in half if we wanted to, to do that. So we have the capabilities on that. So for install, we have a thicker gauge wire. We have a number six wire that goes from the battery of the truck to the bed of the truck with a quick disconnect and a 30 amp breaker in line. Now we have the other side of that disconnect that's gonna be connected to the RV so that we can plug in for power. 
I'll put a link down in the description to this because they come in really handy and are just easy to use. This one's rated at 50 amps. They have one that's above it that's rated well over 100 amps. Uh, so get one that's the, the proper size for what you're planning to do. We have 20 amps or 30 amps going into this. So uh, this 50 amp one is gonna be fantastic. So these wires we ran just on the inside of the skin for the fifth wheel. And then we were able to come into the, the DC charge controller. On the opposite side of the unit, we have the out that the positive side goes to a circuit breaker and then connects to the positive bus bar that connects to the batteries. And on the negative side, we just go to the negative bus bar that is then connected to the batteries. They're really pretty simple to set up. This has really been a, a good addition to the RV. We actually set this up when we were up in Alaska, just driving around to all the different places where you're boondocking, you're off grid, and just being able to have that base for charging the batteries, whether it's cloudy outside or not. So we often run our fridge off the inverter. So we run it on electric as we drive. And with this and the solar, we have plenty to keep the fridge going and to continue to charge the batteries, that little bit extra to charge the batteries as we go. So for advantages, you could say charging up the batteries properly, uh, running the fridge as we're driving down the road, and it works as an effective isolator too. So especially if you have a class A or a class C, even in our situation, when you turn off the ignition, we turn off the lights to the truck, it turns off the connection from the, the main battery, the starter battery to the RV battery. So you don't wanna drain your starter battery and this works effectively in that situation too. And last but not least is it actually protects your alternator if you switched over to lithium batteries because lithium batteries have such a low internal resistance that if you have a large cable going from your alternator to your lithium batteries, they can use up all the power when they, they need to charge up. If you have a depleted lithium battery, the internal resistance will take all that power from the alternator and actually fry your alternator. Victron did a video on this and they demonstrated how having lithium batteries without something to protect your alternator, you can actually end up frying it. This is actually really important for the class A and the class Bs because usually uh, you can have the alternator closer to the batteries and you don't have the distance that we had on our truck. And so if that's a larger wire, it really can fry your alternator. We didn't have that problem with our truck because of the distance and the small gauge wire has a lot of that resistance before it gets to the battery that it offsets the, the low internal resistance of the lithium battery. It's a, it's a strange effect, but uh, we ran for a long time without having something in between the seven-way pin connector and our lithium batteries. But if you have a drivable RV where that's closer together or you're wanting to take control or gain more function of charging your batteries as you drive, uh, this is definitely the way that you'd wanna go to do it safely, to do it properly. And you can actually set these up for different types of batteries. You can set it up for lead acid or if you had AGM and of course lithium, it has the settings to be able to set it up for your specific battery. There's a variety of them out there. We went with the Renogy because it was simple, it was cost effective, and it was effective at what we wanted to do. So it, it fit the bill. We just wanted one that was small that we could bank on 20 amps going into the RV. So uh, Victron would be my other favorite brand that I always like to get stuff from. Uh, but this one was very inexpensive and works really well. So I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope that answered the questions of why we installed this one on our RV and when and why you would wanna use a DC to DC charge controller. Uh, so I think that's gonna do it for this week. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.